Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for a Collaborative Warfare Extra video, and I'm showing you my new VTOL plane, because I used to have a, a VTOL that I was using in Collaborative Warfare, but then we got Fire Spitter and Kerbal Aircraft Expansion, that means we have jump jet engines, which means I don't have to actually put a full-on engine underneath my aircraft, we can just straight up have jump jets. And we'll take a look at that right now. Because this is my new aircraft. It is the MPAV Raptor, the multiple purpose aerial vehicle Raptor. You will hear that name coming from my enemies with fear in their voices and in their hearts and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, thinking this might be a bit of a game changer because it's a highly capable aircraft. Um, and it's incredibly fast at high altitudes, it's reasonably fast at low altitudes. But yeah, that turbojet means it's really, really fast at high altitudes, which means I can get from my bases to other bases very quickly. And the VTOLs mean I can land pretty much anywhere. That combination means that it would be possible for me to say, oh, I don't know, fly from Hearthland Peak down to Edis Side, and then maybe from Edis Side on to Black crags because uh, if you watch Twitchy's video you'll know what I'm talking about I'm not gonna go into that too much today I'll probably explain it in my next video but you should definitely go and watch Twitchy's video shit happens shit starts popping off it's been going crazy up in here anyway so we're gonna ascend to altitude and because we've got fire spitter we have these really nice afterburner effects I thought they looked a bit too cartoony at first well they do look kind of like cartoony uh, afterburners but they look surprisingly realistic for after afterburners and especially and they do fit with Kerbal's uh, um, I think art style really. Well, the color adds a bit of a weird art style. But yeah, you'll also have noticed these um, air brakes. These are very nice. They're actually helpful for maneuvering at low speeds. You can kind of just go crazy with it and obviously just brake if I want. It also has flares, of course. Um, its loadout is quite special. Um, well, it's actually not that special. It has a chain gun, which is very good for a um, aircraft that can fly at low speeds. Especially that this is a VTOL, so it can fly at basically no speed. Um, additionally, it has these. Um, six Hellfire missiles. Probably I could bump that up to eight if I really desired, which will pretty much destroy anything I want. And if it they aren't um, hardy enough to destroy what I want, because they are only Hellfire missiles, I can replace these six missiles with two Maverick missiles. And if I did a few tweaks, I could probably strap a cruise missile to this if, I don't know, I wanted to sink a boat that looked like it was ruled by a penguin. <laughs> I like dropping hints about stuff. But yeah, this um, it has a fairly standard wi uh, wing setup. I've tried to not to make the wings too big um, while still providing quite a lot of lift. Um, and I didn't try to stick them too much to the side. Because these work quite well. Um, obviously they could be shot off quite easily. And it is nowhere near as armoured as my um, HAP fighters. The, uh, uh, not HAP fighters, the um, H uh, the HI Storms. That's what they are. The, um, the heavy interceptors that have armor on the belly so they can withstand gunfire from the um, uh, from below although given the advent of a huge amount of 30 millimeter cannons in the uh, in the collaborative warfare world I'm not sure how effective that will be because pretty much uh, <laughs> well metals pretty much paper to those um, so yeah this uh, this is quite nice and it is made possible by the um, fire spitter people and we also have uh, an ejection module here from Vanguard Parachutes. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. They've got a bit of ammo at the back. Just 600, 600 rounds because they didn't want to add too much weight. Um, and obviously weapon manager and things. These air intakes, incidentally, I'd like to use the structural ones. They look a little better. Um, but they do not... The structural intakes do not like VTOLs. I just kept getting flame outs and losing wings and people. Uh, <laughs> definitely we did lose people. And it has quite a thick body, um, so it can carry a great deal of fuel, because this is insanely long range. And you're probably wondering why you're going so to such a high altitude, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're like, oh yeah, that's where the turbojet works quite well. Because um, as the thrust rises, I actually do start to use quite a lot of fuel. Um, Jesus Christ, we've burnt... Oh yeah, it's because there's not that much fuel in here. But we've still got a lot of fuel in the main tank. Um, you can see we haven't used that much fuel to get to altitude. And then at altitude, which is about 18 kilometers, I find, we can go at about a kilometer per second, I and mean, we've already just smashed through the sound barrier, which means this thrust will increase. Um, but yeah, we will we can fly at about a kilometer a second, maybe a little over. Um, we'll see how fast we can get it up to at about 18 kilometers using under 0.3 units of fuel at a time. So yeah, this is for long distance flying. It's for fighting. It can dogfight if I needed to. If someone was going to use an AI. Um, I'd probably strap side sidewinders to it if that were the case. Anyway, I'm going to flatten out a bit and try and get to uh, some serious speed now. 
We're at a 430 meters a second and increasing rapidly. Yeah, 450. Uh, yeah, it's really picking up speed now. High altitudes. This turbojet is really good. Although it has been um, neutered quite a lot. The ISP has been halved in the new update. But that's okay. It was a bit overpowered before. Although I have to say I like overpowered. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much at just at 600 and change at this point. Um, we're starting to get some serious Mark effects. And we're starting to really pick up speed. 650 and change. Um... Yeah, that one turbojet is really enough for this. At lower altitudes, it can break the sound barrier. It can, f uh, it's more than capable of uh, fighting and fighting ground units and such. I'm going to flatten out a little more. We start to pick up a lot of heating at a kilometer a second. We definitely pick up a lot of heating. Possibly, well, uh, actually, in the new update, much less deadly. Before, when I was pushing the maximum speed of this aircraft, um, it kind of just burned up. In the new update, not so much. Um, so yeah, we're just going to flatten out now. Uh, try not to rise too much, but we are pretty much fixed on this profile. 900 meters a second, and we're already nearing like a thousand. We're almost traveling at a kilometer a second, which makes getting plate from point A to point B very easy. And this is a pretty good aircraft for going from point A to point B to point C. Um, that's that's a kilometer a second, and we're starting to pick up some serious fire. Uh, and you can see our fuel usage has dropped below one unit again. Um, and as we get up to altitude, and actually, you know, I probably wouldn't fly at max health the whole way. I'd probably drop off my um, drop off my thrust a bit, so we would be using very little fuel. But yeah, you can see the thrust is dropping off, but our uh, speed is still increasing, which means our liquid fuel usage is decreasing, which is very nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is made for assaults. So probably not the heaviest of assaults. I'd probably leave that for my uh, um, heavy interceptors and. Um, the ones where I need a super maneuverable aircraft that can go pretty long range would... Actually, this probably takes up the long range uh, thing at this point. Oh, that's 1100 meters a second, but I think the HSI, the high-speed interceptors, are really maneuverable, really good for um, really, like, just punishing, like, uh, turrets. So yeah, we have got... This is just going to basically replace the VTOL and probably take up a lot of work of what the uh, high-speed interceptor would have done. Um, but yeah, it is basically my new general purpose aircraft, and that's 1150. I'm going to try and get to 1200 meters a second, and you can see we've already almost gone transcontinental. It's ridiculous. Um, that's 1160, 1163. Uh, in a dive, I might be able to get even more speed. But anyway, let's just go back to the runway, and I'll demonstrate a few other things, because it can take off in more ways than one. It doesn't need to take off as a VTOL, it can take off and land on a runway, and it can land anywhere, as I've said, that is its point. It is made for just kicking ass, basically. Um, turn the brakes off. Am I? Yeah, my air flaps, oh, my flaps are working, they just went up just then. Um, and the turret makes it really good for ground assault. If I was to um, dogfight, I'd probably prefer to use fixed turrets, but that's that's more the high-speed interceptors kind of game, because against like a, well, this is pretty much pretty maneuverable, but maneuverable, but not really. It's probably wouldn't outmaneuver something made for dogfighting. And at 100 meters a second, we can take off no sweat and stow our gear. And luckily, we have a turret out here ready for a fight. We'll uh, hopefully be able to cut it up some. Damn it, man! I'm a doctor, not a magician. Okay, there will have been a little blip, I'm sorry for that, it's just because uh, KSP crashes quite a lot and Bandicam doesn't really like recording stuff when after a crash. Um, so yeah, we're going to get 5 kilometers away and then I'm going to switch to Team B and we're going to fight. We're going to have a big old fight. Um, well, a fairly small fight. This is actually made for taking out multiple targets, since it has 6 missiles and if I was to bring 2 Mavericks, that's uh, 2 targets dead as fuck. Um, but I think for two targets, three missiles each, that'll probably do, and then I can finish off anything else with the turret. Um, so yeah, this will hopefully be a key player in my next move, given that uh, Twitchy has um, done a few things. So yeah, let's uh, turn it around. This is actually uh, pretty... St it's really stable. It didn't used to be, but I fixed it, basically. Um, so now it's pretty stable. I can pull, like, full pelt and won't go... That was full pelt pulling. I know I slowed down a lot, um, but it really... Uh, it, w it just won't flip out, which is good, because it's not very good at getting out of flip-outs, because it's quite a heavy aircraft, and it doesn't have massive wings. That's more of a high-speed interceptor thing, because the high-speed interceptor is made to be aerodynamically unstable in combat. Uh, well, it can be unstable. If it flips out, it's not a problem, so it has such big wings. So it is made for um, 
just a fight, really. Uh, just like an aerial fight or dodging things. This is more general purpose, as I've said. But anyway, let's arm our weapons. Uh, switch to Team B. We are now have Hellfires primed. We're probably about to be shot quite seriously. Um, here we go. That is a missile away. Pop flares straight away. Uh, we're at three kilometers. Uh, far off a missile. Far off another missile. I have enough. And pop flares. Pop flares, pop flares. Flares, flares, flares! There we go. And um, now there's a hail of gunfire against my missiles. And let's see how well those missiles do against the gun turret. I'm hoping really badly because, um, well, I'd like my turret to do well. And that's a kill. The turret's actually usually a little better against missiles, but yeah, that is a kill. That's how effective this aircraft is. Let's hope no one else gets their hands on one of these because uh, it can clearly deal with my defenses quite well. However, I'm going to probably move over to a more having more turrets so if your missiles are firing who gives a fuck I'm gonna shoot you anyway sort of uh, sort of mentality um, but yeah this is my new aircraft it will change the face of the war and you will hear the word raptor with uh, a joke in people's throats and uh, fear in their hearts because uh, well they're gonna be all uh, scared of this scared of this shit and uh, yeah let's try landing it just real quick because you know that's one of the fun parts which is actually it's actually quite hard to land a VTOL. Um, the other one was much better at landing, in fairness. This is a little bit more cumbersome. But um, we'll just try landing it pretty much right in the KSC. Uh, it is it is quite... It's it's landable. It's just reasonably difficult. Um, but those air brakes do make maneuvering at low speeds reasonably nice, actually. Uh, shutting down the main engine. Moving over. Dropping our wheels down. And uh, actually VTOLing onto wheels is quite nice because you have a little bit more... A little bit more give, and we'll, uh, actually I don't want to get into a stall profile, um, I'm just going to drop myself down a little more, throttle up, throttle up, throttle up, um, you know what, there won't be a stall, we're now just powered landing, got to be a little careful, uh, tip back a little bit, to slow myself down with the engines and the brakes, because obviously the uh, brakes can't do everything, um, that would be rather ridiculous, uh, I am going to turn ever so slightly, using the uh, control or the brakes as control surfaces because I don't want to land in those mountains that might be a little bit too much um, just tip over use the engines to uh, really get me out of here it can maneuver quite well on VTOL engines I always get a little worried uh, maneuvering on VTOL engines because it, it can be very difficult given that there's so much aerodynamics going on um, but yeah we are still descending uh, just a little over two-thirds thrust is really definitely enough for this sort of thing uh, because it has got a lot of thrust and we are a little low on fuel now. But yeah, you can see that is a nice sight to behold. Yeah, I think deploying these around the uh, the uh, <laughs> around around the world will be uh, rather nice. And uh, a few of these will be able to knock out anything. And maybe if I equip it with um, my heavy fighter or something, as a wingman, it might uh, be able to do... Well, might be able to kill anything we want to kill. And throttle up and throttle down. And there we go. Brakes on, brakes on, brakes on, brakes on. And there we go. And shut the engines off. Perfect landing. Well, reasonably perfect. It's perfect if he's not dead. And if it wasn't perfect, we're just eject our crew. He didn't have a parachute. He was a fool and a traitor. He ejected from the plane. Never eject from the plane! I may have been pressing the wrong button. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to the next episode of Collaborative Warfare, which will most likely be tomorrow, because if it's not, I'm going to uh, freaking Turkey, so we'll all be fucked. So yeah, anyway, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.